uh, they were often engineered by nonprofit groups who would kind of do almost a type of money laundering of giving money, of uh, giving a home builder a, a gift, uh, that the home builder would give a gift to the nonprofit, which would give a gift to the home buyer. So, you know, I don't quite know where the federal definition of money laundering comes in here, but uh, the, uh, HUD recently uh, spoke up and banned us. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, can we try this one? Uh, sure, I can do that. Where? Let's put in the shirt. Sure. Yep. Okay. Is that better? You get sound up there? Okay. Fine. Thanks. Thanks. Um, I'll start the I'll I'll start the first page again. <laughs> Now, it, it, um, it's interesting with these, with these down payment assistant loans, uh, these, these had a, a, a even before uh, 2005, they had a default rate 25 times as high as a national foreclosure rate. These were a complete disaster, and yet the Bush administration wanted to use these as a model for how to expand home ownership. Now, these, you know, Bush says, Bush and a lot of liberal Democrats who supported this, said it was fine because home ownership is so good for the individual. But what they're doing is ruining neighborhoods across the land. Because as soon as you have one or two houses going to foreclosure in a block, it, it's like dominoes falling. Especially in inner cities, it's, 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 it's been a, a catastrophe there. And this is, this is snowballing, in part because of a lot of the uh, loans of policies like this and because of what Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac have done. Uh, during the Clinton years, there was a lot more pressure for these housing agencies to go out and make loans to people that were uh, lower income or from certain social economic groups. And there was almost a presumption that people in certain groups were, were uh, that the market was biased against them. But there was no such evidence when it came down to the question of being credit worthy. Uh, the, some of the federal government's own studies showed that uh, different ethnic groups had of uh, bankruptcy rates more than double of other ethnic groups of the same income. But somehow the uh, banks were not supposed to consider that when they were doing uh, uh, mortgage loans. Now Fannie Mae and uh, Freddie Mac have bought up, have provided a safety net for a huge number of these bad uh, subprime loans. And as of a few months ago, those two entities held almost half the uh, mortgage debt in the entire country. And that's a lot of the mortgage debt that's going down. And once again, uh, there was this notion that, that, uh, that Congress or the government could run something like this competently because there would be oversight. Well, Fannie Mae and Freddie spent more than $200 million in contributions for congressmen, contributions and lobbying. And there were a lot of people that were saying that, that Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac had loose standards and they were going to lead to ruin. But Fannie and Freddie would give money to the congressman, and the congressman would, would block tightening their standards. Plus, there were a lot of former uh, government officials, top government officials, that were hired to work for these Fannie Mae and Freddie, and given millions of dollars of salary, even though they knew nothing about housing or mortgages. It was like, a, 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 it was like one more door for the uh, former government officials to go to and um, fill their pockets. Now, it's part of what's frustrating of uh, following some of these areas decade in and decade out uh, is that there's no learning curve. You see the same follies year after year after year. Foreign aid is a good example of this. Uh, going back to the uh, 1960s, uh, there was widespread American opposition to foreign aid against, uh, among the American people because it was perceived to be a boondoggle. But you've had president after president simply ignore that and push through all these foreign aid programs that didn't really uh, achieve anything except to uh, boost the sales of Mercedes-Benz in Africa or boost the amount of deposits in Swiss banks. The uh, American foreign aid has propped up, uh, American foreign aid has bankrolled government intervention throughout the third world. You have all these third world governments that would not have the resources to wreck their own economy unless they were given them by the U.S. government or by the World Bank or by other foreign aid entities. And this is, this is not, not a recent uh, observation. This is, economists were pointing this out in the 1960s. And yet the policies continued. 
Uh, George Bush decided that the, uh, he was very outspoken as far as in 2002, recognizing that foreign aid was usually wasteful and uh, spawned corruption. So Bush said, Bush announced that he would start a, a new challenge program, the Millennium Challenge Account, the MCA, uh, as a new foreign aid program to fix all the, uh, the failures of foreign aid. And uh, this was money that went to foreign governments that would govern, just, uh, govern justly, invest in their people, and encourage economic freedom. What Bush's program did is effectively offer a bribe to foreign rulers to, uh, uh, for not plundering their own countrymen. But why is it necessary to tax American people to encourage uh, foreign governments to respect economic freedom? There, there's no need for a handout to respect uh, economic freedom. You just need to have the government on a leash. But what our foreign aid does is make government a lot bigger overseas and make it a lot harder for the people in those countries to put their government on a leash. And Bush launched this program with all this hoopla, but it turned out to be simply uh, one more uh, example of um, a Washington fraud, a, an ethics fraud that failed to fix corruption. Bush has given out more than $150 billion in foreign aid, and under him, the U.S. government has bankrolled many of the most corrupt governments in the world, including Nigeria, Bangladesh, Paraguay, and Georgia. Georgia has become a darling of the neoconservatives and part of the American media, but they have consistently been ranked as one of the most corrupt governments in the world. And it's hard to understand how they got the halo that they did. Um, but, and foreign aid is not simply, simply a, a question of wasting money. Um, since the 19, late 1950s, the U.S. has run something called the Food for Peace Program. You know, a, a name like that should set off the alarm bells. <laughs> what, what Food for Peace does is it's a, a program in which U.S. agricultural surpluses are dumped on foreign markets. Now, it was obvious from the mid-60s onwards that this was bankrupting foreign farmers. There have been scandal after scandal after scandal on this. It caused, it's caused starvation in Haiti. It's wrecked the markets in Egypt. Uh, it was a major problem for India in the 1960s. A study, and uh, many of the uh, best critics of this are left-wing groups like Oxfam. Uh, CARE, which is the, uh, one of the world's largest charities, announced last year that it would cease participating in the U.S. program to dump these food surpluses abroad because CARE, CARE recognized that was uh, driving down local crop prices and making, making foreign countries dependent on aid. It was destroying their self-reliance. Now, this is, it's, it's great that CARE came around and said this, so CARE's been benefiting from the program for quite a few decades, but it's had almost no impact in Washington because there are different groups that benefit. This is good for the farm lobby. This is good for the merchant marine, which is, you know, which the U.S. government pays exorbitant fees to, uh, you know, ship the stuff overseas and dump it abroad. It's good for other entities in Washington. So it doesn't matter that the program's a fraud, that it does all this harm, because people in Washington benefit. You know, I've, I've, um, a criticism I've often heard of some of the writing I've done, such as lost rights, is that I'm too cynical. Now, obviously, that's something that always cuts to the heart. But th there are so many areas, th there are so many areas in public policy where, it, where you look at them, and, and not only are they bad and uh, dishonest and corrupt, but they've been that way for a decade or two decades. Now, a prime example of that is the agriculture policy holy water, ethanol. Uh, ever since the 1920s, you've had the farm lobby saying that ethanol was going to be the national salvation, it would make America uh, have all these benefits. Since the 1970s, we've heard that it's make the U.S. allow us to achieve energy independence. Uh, but it's always been a fraud. There was a, a USDA, an agri agri agriculture department study back in 1986 that concluded that increased production of ethanol cost consumers and taxpayers roughly $4 for every dollar of benefit it gives to farmers. But this is close enough for government work. And, and it, it didn't matter that there's a 75% loss in the transfer because 